GitHub Sponsors is in more places, a cool GitHub Pages update, and tons of retro gaming news. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we talk about the latest developer news and cool open source projects. Obligatory like and subscribe message here. Thank you. And uh, like many other parts of the world, it has been oppressively, and I'll just say it offensively, hot in Seattle this week. So. I'm wearing a tank top because if I don't, I will die. It's also Super Nintendo themed, which kind of fits with the unofficial theme this week, uh, which is like retro game news. And if you are also fighting the heat, please stay safe, drink lots of water. And now let's get into the news. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is a great new update for GitHub Sponsors. GitHub Sponsors is a program that lets open source developers and organizations receive financial support for the important work that they do every single day. And it launched about three years ago, and I've talked to a number of developers and maintainers who've told me that it's made a really big impact on their lives. I actually sponsor a number of projects and uh, maintainers as well. This is something that is really important. And we have some good news. GitHub Sponsors is now available in 30 more regions around the world. So that brings the total number uh, of uh, supported regions to 68. So this includes Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Croatia, Hungary, Iceland, Indonesia, Israel, Kenya, South Africa. Like, there's a whole list. I'm not going to list all 30 of them. You can go to the link down below to see it, but it's in way more places. Uh, and um, now this means that maintainers from those places can sign up and participate in the program. The program also is available to everyone. There's no more wait list. So if you've wanted to sign up uh, to be part of GitHub Sponsors, do it now. And if you're looking for help creating a great um, sponsors page, my girl Roselle has one uh, that I've got linked to down below. Great job on that, Roselle. Keeping open source sustainable is really, really important and GitHub Sponsors is just one way to do that. And I, I wanna send my congrats to Jessica and the whole sponsors team for working really hard to bring this to even more places. And I know that they're not stopping here. So uh, if you get a lot of benefit out of an OSS project or a library, you know, show your support by sponsoring the project or the developer. Okay, moving on to some other GitHub news. Uh, there's a new update to GitHub Pages, and it's actually in beta right now, and I think it's pretty cool. So GitHub Pages, if you're not familiar, it lets you create and host static websites from your GitHub repo. It's really, really awesome. And historically, the GitHub page, uh, Pages has basically been primarily working with the Jekyll static site generator, but there are tons and tons of, of uh, static site generators out there, uh, or Jam Jamstacks, if you will. There's Next.js, Next.js, Hugo, Gatsby. And while you could create a GitHub action to publish uh, to, to those frameworks with pages in the past, it was a little bit complicated. But now there's a new feature that makes it a lot easier. So basically you can now deploy to a GitHub pages site directly from a repository using GitHub Actions without needing to set up a publishing source. And so that's gonna make it a lot easier. And the team um, even has a bunch of um, starter workflows to get you started. Uh, I've got a link to the changelog announcement down below and be on the lookout for more updates about how you can do more with this because I'm really excited. I really love it. Moving right along. All right, so if you're watching the GitHub YouTube channel, you might be interested in the underlying technology behind GitHub, which is Git. In which case, I encourage you to attend Git Merge, which is taking place September 14th and 15th in Chicago, Illinois. And Git Merge is dedicated to amplifying new voices in the Git community and showcasing the most thought-provoking projects from developers, maintainers, and teams around the globe. And I'm gonna be there, and so will my colleagues, Kadesha and Rizal. If you happen to be there, be sure to say hi. Details are linked down below. Next up, I want to talk about a fantastic new tool for writing very good looking and very fancy shell scripts. And it's called Gum, and it's from Charm, who are the, the brains behind uh, the, the libraries Charm and Bubble Tea and Lip Gloss. And we've covered some of those things before. And what Gum lets you do is use a lot of stuff that are in those other libraries uh, that can make really pretty uh, CLIs, but you don't even have to write it in Go. You can actually do it all in a shell script. So if you're watching the video uh, demo that's playing right now, you can see how cool this is. And it's all written in a bash script. I love it. I discovered gum earlier today and I cannot wait to start playing with it because it's going to completely change how I write my dot files from now on, including the dot file that I wrote that turned that animated GIF into an MP4 so that editor Matt could insert it into this video. One day I will share my, my dot files publicly, but today is not that day. 
Gum, however, is available publicly, and I've got a link to its GitHub repo down below. And be sure to check out Charm's other projects too, because if you like doing command line stuff, they make amazingly cool tools and utilities. All right, now let's move into what I would like to call the retro gaming section of today's show. So I've got three things from three different eras of gaming to talk about. So the first is that the GBA Jam 2022 is back and the submissions um, are open from July 31st, 2022 through October 31st. So that means that you have three months to make something cool that runs on the Game Boy Advance using whatever tools you like. And there's a prize pool of about 800 US dollars at the time that I'm filming this. But like, look, this is really about the love of the game, right? Uh, this is a, a game jam that's, that's hosted by the GBA dev.net community and GBA dev.net has tons of resources for getting started. I've got the rules, the details, the discord, all that stuff um, is linked in the show notes down below. I actually recently finally got my analog pocket, which means that I don't have to keep using my, my busted Game Boy Advance SP. So I might actually try my hand at trying to do something cool with this too. All right, next, in even more retro gaming slash computing news, I wanted to give a shout out to GitHub user FruitBat, who is documenting how to create a ZX Spectrum with a Raspberry Pi Pico. So his project offers basic 48K or 128K ZX Spectrum emulation using the Raspberry Pi 2040 with DVI, LCD, and VGA output, which is really cool. Uh, obviously, my boss Martin has to build one of these himself and he, he needs to run Doom on it. Like that, that's what he has to do. Anyway, I've got a link to the GitHub project below. As I said, FruitBat has documented what parts work, what libraries you need to get going. Um, and, and if you wanna to contribute to this project, I'm sure the pull requests are welcome. I love this, it's so cool. And now to close out our retro game corner, it is time for my pick of the week. Okay, so two years ago, Lego spoke directly to me, a lifelong Nintendo fan, by creating a, repl a replica of the NES in Lego. But what about other classic consoles? Uh, what about them? The millennials were covered, right? But what about the other generations of gamers? Well, never fear Gen Xers because Lego has listened and has made an Atari 2600, AKA the Atari VCS or video computer system, available uh, complete with replica cartridges and joysticks. So the set actually goes on sale on August 1st, 2022. And look, I was not alive when the Atari 2600 was a thing, but I'm well aware of it. Uh, I deeply respect its history in making home video games a thing. I've always been a huge fan of the box art and it's really awesome to see how Lego has recreated this very late 1970s styling in brick form. It's so cool. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what other video game consoles you want Lego to take on next. I still really, really want a Lego Nintendo 64, but that's just me. Uh, also, let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories in the comments down below. We'd love to get those. That does it for me. Uh, again, stay safe, stay cool, stay hydrated. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give it a like and uh, subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.